What's going on guys? We're out here today and today we got a little bit of a problem as you probably can see. Not to mention the fact that the ducks will not quit talking whenever I am. Ducks don't talk. You know what I mean? They haven't been in a video in forever and they still don't like when I'm recording. They literally only do it when I'm recording. I guess it's because I'm talking or something, but yeah, so I stop talking and then they stop. So we do have a little bit of a problem on our hands. So uh, here's where the scene of the crumb happened. I'm assuming, I actually don't know. I guess technically it was in there. But let me just start from the beginning and walk you through the whole thing. About a month or so ago now, actually no, it's been about two months. My elk season was over. So I went ahead, got the trail cameras I was using for that. And I brought them up here. It wasn't there though. It was on this tree right here. And you know, I just let it run. It didn't really pay much attention to it. I didn't really have a reason for it being here except to just watch stuff. So there was one day I found a dead chicken in the coop and it was one of these smaller chickens here. I only have two of those tops left from the ones I bought last spring. I just found it inside the coop. Didn't really think much of it because if you remember I had a few of those that kept dying so I thought maybe it was just a uh, not a very healthy bird I guess you could say. So yeah I was kind of iffy about it but it wasn't a huge deal. Not the fact that it died that sucked but it actually dying wasn't a huge deal. So yeah I just left the camera here. I think I skimmed through the pictures that it sent me. Didn't really pay much attention so that explains why I didn't catch the problem ahead of time. Yeah eat that cornbread. But then we had another incident. So two days ago actually no it was yesterday. What the heck? Okay never mind. So two days ago, I found another dead chicken in the same exact spot, which uh, that part's not really significant, I don't guess, but I found it in the same spot. It was actually one of my Rhode Island Reds, and that's what kind of threw me off. These two birds, I actually had three, but you know, one's dead now. They are never sick. Like there's nothing wrong with them except for whichever one broke its leg and I had to like put it in a cage by itself. That was different though. That was the rooster's fault. But you know, I thought maybe, maybe it was just an old bird. And the weird thing about it, I don't have the actual chicken with me now. We'll get to that in a second. But the weird thing about it was that it wasn't just dead there. So uh, this is about to get graphic. I'll go ahead and I'm not going to show you, but I'm going to explain what happened to it. Okay. So it's whole backside was eaten off and so were its internal organs. Yeah. Told you it's graphic. You know, that, that kind of threw me off there. I was like, no, something's attacking this. Or there was one other explanation that might make sense. And that was that it just died from natural causes or even another chicken killed it. Because you know, it is an old bird. It's a few years old now. I wouldn't be surprised if it just died for no reason. And then it being eat up and stuff that could have been like mice, rats, even other chickens. That's kind of weird, but they do that to the extreme that it was like, you know, chewed up. I didn't see a chicken doing that and it would be very hard for mice or rats to do it. But I gave it the benefit of the doubt. So last night I moved that camera down here and I put the dead chicken right there. Do you see a dead chicken there anymore? That's my point. Oh, but don't worry, the evidence gets better or worse, depending on how you look at it. So as you can imagine, our camera caught our culprit on camera. That was a tongue twister. Wait, no, I said camera twice, it don't count. So take a look at this picture. So if you look closely, this has no significant value whatsoever. But if you take a look at this one, as you can see, I think you can make it out. There is a possum crawling over this thing and grabbing the chicken. And then it disappears with it and goes somewhere. I don't know what happened to it then, but I would imagine that it took it somewhere and ate it. So then I took a look at that picture and I was like, hey, we got a possum problem. And I was, I was just a little bit curious. Maybe, maybe I'd missed something whenever I had the camera set up before. And I knew the camera died the night that it happened. It actually died like two nights before, which kind of sucks. But I went back to look at whenever the first chicken died a while back. And sure enough, there is a possum that goes right there. Wait, wait, it gets better. In this picture, you can clearly see him inside the fence. So, as you can imagine, I'm not letting my chickens out anytime soon. And I also counted my chickens. I'm missing more than those two. I'm missing three. And the third one is sadly, we never named that chicken, but it's the one I hatched. It's sadly that one's mom. I actually had this problem the summer before last also, and it turned out to be a possum. I don't know what it is about this area around here, but let me tell you, we get tons and tons of possums. I've caught baby possums here, adult possums over there, countless possums on this hillside. Not sure what the problem is, but there's a ton of possums, which is kind of weird because possums are lazy, okay? Most of the time they run into this, they're not gonna try to get in. But uh, yeah, I had this same problem a year and a half ago now. I did catch it though. That's actually the one that Mr. Cluck attacked, I'm assuming, because it had scars over its eyes. But you know, we don't have Mr. Cluck now, we have his wimpy, cowardly son. So we are gonna be trapping this possum, at least attempting to. So trapping season is almost over and uh, I didn't think I was gonna be trapping this year. Wasn't really planning on it, but uh, we're gonna be trapping in this video. So the actual entry point, I think, is right in here because, well, I mean, look at it, it, it these rocks keep sliding out. Those are actually new ones I put on it last night just to be safe. And uh, well, I guess it worked because the possum didn't get back in, but it really didn't need to. It had a whole meal right there. But also it looks like the possum is coming out from under here in that one picture because you can see it coming out from under there. So I'm assuming it's coming right in here, coming down and then going up into that little crack right there. Oh, actually look at that. There's claw marks right there. So before we lose any more chickens to the vicious possum, let's go ahead and trap a sucker. Also, I can't use a live trap, so we're gonna have to use foothold trap. Not only is my live trap right there, but it's broke. That's why it's right there. 
No, I know this may seem like, you know, the basics for most people who trap, but to me, this is like bringing out the big guns, okay? I hardly ever use this stuff unless I'm like going out trying to trap for fur or something. I know I probably should use it more, but uh, I don't know, I just don't really feel like it. Also, speaking of something I probably shouldn't do, my traps are down here. Here's one of them. I, I like never put this thing up since I bought it and it's caught in a tree. Like I said, I probably shouldn't do this, but it still works fine. And uh, possums, I think they're a little slow, so uh, not really worried about having a super fast trigger speed. Yeah, it works. Now, uh, this chain here is like six foot long and then that line is like 25 foot long. So uh, it's a little bit on the lengthy side, but we're gonna use it anyway. My goal here is actually to trap it right here and make it to where it can't reach the chicken cage. Cause especially if I accidentally catch a raccoon or something, those things will tear up literally anything they can reach. Uh, these bricks, I don't care if it tries to tear those up cause it can't. So we'll probably do that. And then, uh, well, with the 25 foot, our possibilities are kind of uh, almost endless. Wait, no, it's like 31 foot even more endless. And I am gonna use bait. I'm not just gonna wait for it to come up here and try to get back in because that might cost us another chicken. So for that, we have a Taco Bell cup full of dog food. And I actually do have this corn here and even layer feed. I usually just do some corn, throw that sucker on there. And like I say, corn's a lot slower than a chicken. Unless that chicken's asleep and it's not time. I mean, they are gonna move when they feel something touch them. But possums, they snap their mouth very quickly. So, not gonna take any chances there. Dog food's a little bit more of an upgrade than corn. And also, it could just be me, but I do think that fresh chicken tastes just a little bit better than a piece of dry corn. And I'm assuming dog food does, even though it probably doesn't taste as good as a chicken. Although, I do not know, because I am not a dog. And I actually had this here last night, so I could kind of direct the animal in this way, so I could get it on camera. If, you know, it was an animal that caused this. Which, you know, it was but that's actually going to serve the same purpose today but instead of a camera trap we're going to be using a steel foothold trap dang it note to self don't blindly look for a trap although to prove a point yeah that, that just left an indention in my skin they don't really hurt that bad and you could make the argument that hey an animal foot's pretty small guess what my finger's a little bit smaller than a possum's foot i'm literally setting the trap and it was fast enough to catch me may not be good for something like a fox but i think it'll work for a possum also i should be wearing gloves if you're doing this wear gloves especially if you are working with coyotes or something like that so i'm gonna leave this and this ear uncovered that way they can close shut easily then i'm gonna pack in around the sides with this thick stuff that way it can't really move anywhere. And you may have saw this white bag of stuffing earlier and thought, what the heck's that for? I'm just gonna put this up under the trap pan here. That way no dirt can get in there and animals can still just pop right down on top of that. And by animals, I mean possums, specifically the killer possum. That's his name, the killer possum. His first name's not killer, it's the. And then we're gonna use this to get some uh, sifted, super special dirt that I totally didn't just get out from under the chicken coop. Just kidding, that was a lie. The reason I'm using this is cause it's super dry. I'm gonna push in these sides here, kind of make it a little more natural. Although I don't think it's worried about being natural. I've never found a five gallon bucket in the wild. A three gallon bucket in the wild. And yeah, I think that'll actually do pretty good there. We'll put this right here back because for some reason it wanted to crawl over that. So we're gonna try to prevent it as much as we can. And then this, we'll just kind of scoot it a little closer. And yeah, I'm pretty sure it's gonna step right on that trap pan. As for this cord now, um, I don't care what it is as long as it's 30 foot away and on this side of the chicken coop. So, Let's see here. I'm tied to this tree, I guess. Oh, that's stuck. There we go. All right. And not only do we have a trap set over here, but we also have a tripwire for any, uh, well, I don't know what it's for, but something that's tall and can step over that. I'm not really worried about my scent. This dirt's just gonna smell like chickens because it was under there. They like to play in this dirt too. And also there's a big piece of cornbread right there. Sucker smells that, let me tell you. Dude ain't gonna be worried about any kind of thing he smells from me, which the chickens, I just fed them that. So they're gonna have it eaten about an hour, but I'm sure there'll be a little bit of the smell left. And now for the dog food. I'm gonna set it right here and hope that the birds don't eat it first. And if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know that I usually throw some type of Kool-Aid on there. I like to use strawberry. Well, I'm actually not gonna do that today. This is not Kool-Aid, this is just dish liquid for a demonstration. My chickens, they have been uh, starting laying again recently. I got excited today because I got so many eggs. I've usually been getting like six a day. Today I got nine, but wait, I didn't get nine because this is a stupid egg with no shell, basically. Who laid it, huh? Well, guess what? This possum bait. Yeah, take that. So, my voice just got louder and I made a loud noise. You know what that means? I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow.
and we're back we're out here it is in fact the next day and uh we're almost there actually i can see the wire from here obviously and uh honestly right now it doesn't look great i think if we caught something it would probably try every way it could to get out and i mean also going over to that i do think there was something here last night which we can check the camera in a minute and see so that is technically a wireless camera but i don't buy the subscription to keep it here because i can you know literally come up here every single day and check it and i have to come up here every single day anyway so it's pointless to buy the subscription for that but it does still tell me whenever there's a picture taken it'll say like last uh last interaction or something like that with the camera and around i think it was like two o'clock last night i kept checking it and sure enough every time i would refresh it there would be a new picture right, so pretty good chance that we had something by last night i could just you know quit talking about it and just check and see i'm literally 30 feet from it so let's just do that yep here it is don't see nothing oh hoo -hoo. guys i see it oh yeah we caught him here we go that's our chicken killer right there heck yeah that's what you get when you eat my animals buddy you guys uh you're probably pretty happy right about now but you probably don't even know what's over here but if you did and you knew that i caught it you would be happy you can thank me later dude come on i give you all of this space to roam so you're not bored while you're sitting here and you just go right there and stay oh yeah he got into this wire here there's some wire there he got tangled up around his chain and also he probably couldn't climb up this anyway because he's got a trap on his foot but yeah guys it looks like we caught our chicken killer that is awesome heck yeah and that's a wrap for trapping season just kidding except it actually probably is this wasn't even planned i mean i'm definitely gonna kill him because no he's a chicken killer this guy i know has killed at least two and probably more likely three like i said that one's mom just disappeared and i never found her and she was the smallest chicken so it was easy for it to drag off i'm sure before we do anything with him i actually do want to look at the camera kind of for no reason at all so let's take a look at it okay so this is when i was setting the trap i'm assuming Ooh, okay. There he is. Oh, and we've already caught him. Wow, that was quick. Now, don't let the camera trick you. This is not a giant rat. It's just a possum, which is basically a giant rat. Ooh, 18 degrees. Dang, I didn't know it was that cold. And yeah, as you could see, no more possums come back because we kind of caught it. So now that we do know that it was a possum, honestly, guys, I'm kind of thinking, uh catch and cook maybe you know i kind of have a dumb one in probably at least a year now i think the last one i did was a tree so uh we need some meat and also i just kind of want to prove a point to all these predators out here you eat my chickens i eat you and in a way this is almost like a food chain trapping challenge because i mean we kind of did use an egg here for bait and then we also used that dead chicken as bait the day before and kind of them too like that he wouldn't even be coming here if they weren't here so they're kind of bait also so yeah food chain trapping challenge he eats the chicken i eat him that's a short food chain unless something eats me Let's hope not. I don't know though. These raccoons around here are pretty weird. But yeah, in all seriousness, I don't want to just kill him and leave him somewhere. Or... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I'm telling you, it's only when I'm talking. They're worse than Mr. Cluck was. And now that I think about it, he actually ain't that bad anymore. He hasn't attacked me in a while either. Yeah, Mr. Cluck, he would have just tried to take my leg off. So I guess that is one good thing about him is he don't attack me, but apparently he don't attack possums either. But like I was saying before I got interrupted by a water chicken, I can't just go release him somewhere. He'll eat someone else's chickens. So I pretty much have to kill him. And I don't just want to like, you know, bury him or something. I, I want to put him to some kind of use, you know? So uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do a possum catch and cook. Now I have actually done one before on the channel. It has been probably close to two years now. So, you know, I kind of want to do one again, an updated version. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of this guy. And I know I already kind of said it this video is going to be graphic but yeah if you made it this far i just want to warn you again it's going to get even more graphic okay <laughs> task completed um yeah it only took one shot so uh he didn't suffer i'll just say that i mean he was uncomfortable for the little time that he sat here but at least he had chickens to dream about eating at the same time so uh i'm not going to show too much but he is right there on the corner of the screen i think last time that i actually cooked a possum on the channel i think i used the back legs i'm thinking this time i might use one of the front legs i don't know we'll see how it goes i think this one might be a little bit smaller so probably better to use the back legs but we're going to figure it out in just a second so yeah let's go ahead and get to work on him so as you guys know i bought this for elk hunting also so I'm about to spoil elk hunting for you. So if you haven't watched it and you want to, skip forward 20 seconds. So yeah, as you may know, I didn't kill an elk. So I said we would use this for like a deer or something, but also I didn't kill a deer. In fact, there wasn't even a deer hunting video. So uh, we're using this thing for a squirrel. This ain't a squirrel. We're using it for a possum. And of course the chickens decide to start clucking right now. A single pair of gloves. This is literally meant for big game. This ain't for no squirrel. This thing, they give me one pair of gloves with it. Okay, so uh, kind of sucks, but it's just gloves. So it's not a big deal. At least I didn't like leave out a knife sharpener or something. And I think we'll just use this one and maybe this one, but we're gonna wait until we get it down to just plain meat. You know what I mean? So let's get to work. By the way, in case you might be wondering, this is a boning knife 
or something like that. So I think, yeah, I'm gonna just use the back legs. So pretty simple, I'm just gonna skin the back side of this possum and we'll be good to go. And I'm not gonna do the front part because this leg got caught in a trap and then I, you know, shot him through the chest. So front part's not even really usable. Yeah, I'm kind of doing this like a half, half skin squirrel and I'm getting fur all over the meat. Oh yeah. By the way, if you haven't watched my other video where I uh, cooked a possum, I absolutely loved it. Based on that, it was one of my favorite meats. Besides like deer and uh, elk, it's probably my favorite wild meat. It'd be a close uh, second to squirrel gravy. Cut into the leg here. Should be a joint right there. By the way, this is like the third possum I think I've ever skinned, so I'm not an expert. But yeah, it gets the job done. And there we go, there's our first leg. Same process for the other leg. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave this there and I'll get back to that in a second. Also, I did skin it like that because I'm not worried about the fur, it's possum. It's not like it's a raccoon or a fox or something. And if the idea of a uh, squirrel, this ain't a squirrel still. If the idea of a possum leg grosses you out, it just think of it as a chicken leg. It's basically just a small chicken leg now. I got a chicken leg from a possum that ate a chicken. So basically this is still chicken, kind of, but not really. So this, I washed it off, it is now drying. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna sprinkle the outside with some salt. Uh, I'm actually making a stew, so that much salt's not going to hurt us right now. It's actually going to, you know, incorporate into the soup or stew, whatever it's called. But I'm actually making the same exact stew that I made last time I cooked a squirrel. It's not a squirrel, Derek. It's a possum, not a squirrel. Maybe something inside me is just wanting it to be a squirrel, but I don't know why, because squirrels taste bad, especially if you cook them like this. You got to make them squirrel gravy and get you some biscuits with it. That's how you do it. But I'm kind of doing a remake of that stew. I think I remember all the stuff I put in it, which I could just watch the video. I know I put banana peppers. I think I put steak sauce, salt and pepper, maybe onions. I think that was it. But uh, we're kind of doing a little bit of a remake today, but we're not going to do exactly the same stuff. One of the reasons is because I didn't have all the stuff. And another reason is just because I kind of want to remake it and try to make it even better. So that's what we're doing. And we're actually going to be using this charcoal grill right here. Yes, it has wheels. I like a challenge. And it's like two pounds. By the way, the handle is broken on this. It totally did not happen because I was trying to catch a chicken and fell into it. It actually didn't. I don't remember how it broke. And I don't remember the last time I cooked in this, unless you count a box of firecrackers from the 4th of July. Oh, whoa. That is awesome. That is awesome. So while that's burning out, I already salted both sides of this. So let's go ahead and chop us up some celery. Throw that away. And the good thing about cooking here is I can just throw it down on the ground because now that our killer's gone, I can just let my chickens roam and they're gonna eat it in about an hour. I actually don't like the banana peppers in chunks like I do the celery. So we're gonna cut them into little fine pieces. By the way, in case you're wondering, that balloon there, it's not just a piece of garbage. That's a balloon that I found in the woods and I shot with a 10 gauge. Okay, yeah, well, uh, I didn't kill it. And then like three months later, the tree branch fell, so I got the balloon. So that's not just a piece of garbage hanging from my roof. I mean, it kind of is, but it's a garbage with meaning. Just like that old busted up trail camera. So now that this is starting to burn out, it actually didn't burn completely. That charcoal may have been a little old or something, but it's still extremely hot and I think it'll work. So to start, we've got our Dutch oven here. Let it be heating up. And I guess the fire kind of locked our pan because it just reignited for some reason. But hey, I'm not gonna stop it. It'll be fine. We got it in a pan. It's not like we're cooking it right on the grate. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of olive oil, which is probably not good to have this close to a fire, but oh well, we'll be all right. And normally I wouldn't use olive oil to just like fry a piece of meat like this, but we're not gonna be frying it long. We're just gonna sear the sides of it and then we're gonna put it in a stew So it's gonna kind of mix in with it anyway, and it shouldn't burn very fast We'll go on with a little bit of pepper and by a little bit. I mean a lot of bit of pepper on both sides That is and now while our pan is hot, we're gonna go in. It's actually not super hot, but it'll be all right It'll work. We actually don't need too much of a crispy edge on the outside of course So that's just gonna help us get some flavor more than anything because we're gonna be cooking it in liquids Oh, yeah, you can hear it sizzling now All right, cooking up real nice. Flip it over, oh yeah, look at that. That looks like a crispy piece of fried chicken. So I could actually tell you guys how long ago this thing was sitting over there in that trap whenever I edit this video. So I'm gonna plug it right here on the screen and act surprised. Wow. Oh yeah, it's getting real nice now. So what we're gonna do, I got some of this uh, beef base here. I would have rather had chicken with that because not only would it fit the theme of it eating chickens and then I eat it with chickens, I think it would actually just go better with chicken. But I grabbed the wrong one, so we're using beef. Probably still be good anyway. This will probably burn pretty fast. As soon as I go in with it, I'm gonna try to get something else to kind of cool it down a little bit. And we're using water. Yep. We don't have to worry about making a mess though because we're outside. Now I'm gonna go in with the banana peppers from earlier. And now we're gonna watch the smoke tornado. 
Never mind, it disappeared. And now for some celery. Dang, that's some fire celery. All right, gonna go in with a lot more pepper because I just like pepper. Also, like I said, I'm kind of improvising this recipe, so uh, I don't know if it's gonna be good. If you're gonna make this for some reason and go out and try to get a possum, or if you're just gonna like do it with chicken or something. You might wanna wait till the end and make sure it's good. Got some rosemary in here. Pull it off the heat. It's getting a little bit too hot. Garlic powder. Whole cloves would've worked better. This is just more convenient. Same thing with the rosemary. And I think this really makes it taste the best. And it's just pouring a ton of this stuff in here. And we'll actually drop in a few of those whole ones with it. Ah, what the heck? We'll dump in the whole thing. And last time I used uh, steak sauce, which actually has tomato puree in it, I think. So we're gonna add some tomato to this also. And tomato and beef flavoring just goes good together. And of course I popped that wrong. So we're gonna have to use a knife. You ever seen someone cut a piece of metal with the back of a knife? Well, you have now. Totally wasn't already cut. So this is all I'm gonna add. Which I know it seems like a lot, but I mean like salt wise. Cause they package this with a little bit of salt in it anyway. And then the banana pepper juice has salt. And then we also of course salted the possum a little bit extra too. So yeah, we'll just leave it like that. And then we can always salt it at the end also. Stir it up a little bit. This is gonna be a little bit thicker it seems like than the last time we made it, but I think it'll work just fine. And now we close it up. Okay, I think we're good. This will close. I don't think it, ow, that's hot. There we go, now it can breathe. So guys, I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes. And by a couple, I'll probably let it set for, I think last time I cooked it for 40 some minutes. So we're gonna do that again, just because it was super tender and I didn't die after I ate it. So uh, I think 40 minutes will be enough to cook anything out of it. And now we wait. Okay, it's been 40 minutes, 45, it's something like that. Let's go ahead, check it out. That looks delicious. It smells really good too. So I've actually been adding water as it's been cooking cause it'll like cook down all the way. So I added some more water to it to keep it going so it didn't burn or nothing. And uh, yeah, I think it worked pretty good. So let's go ahead and take it over here and plate it up. Hot, hot, hot. This is hot. All right, let's get our leg. Oh man, that's just as tender as it could be. I'll throw some vegetables on there. It's supposed to look prettier than that, but I mean, uh, who cares? And we'll just put it on this because it looks better. By the way, I did clean this with soap. It doesn't have like raw possum on it anymore. So let's go ahead and, uh, oh, it is hot. I guess it did just get done cooking, but for some reason I didn't think it would be hot. Oh man, that smells so good. All right, piece of the possum. Got a little banana pepper there and some celery. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm. That is so good. I know it seems weird. It's a possum and I ate it and I think it's good, but it's good. I don't know if it's better than last time. I don't remember because it was like two years ago. Oh, wow. Wow. Seems like last time was still better. Maybe I needed to add something a little more sour to it or cook it down a little longer to make it a little stronger, you know? But uh, yeah, this is amazing. And I don't know if it's just possum or just the way that I'm cooking the possum that makes it taste so good, but something about it, it's just so good. Well, I can't say that I was disappointed, mostly because I was not disappointed. And we got rid of our chicken killer. That was the biggest thing. The cooking it part was just because I'm weird. But yeah, it was delicious, so who cares? And it's funny, every time I tell someone that I've ate possum and it tastes good, they're like, that's nasty. It's not nasty, okay? It's good. You should try it, but be careful because I'm sure it's easy to get sick if you don't cook it good enough. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. This is kind of our start and our end to try trapping season. So I hope you guys enjoyed trapping season with me. Even though if this happened in the summer, I still could have done it. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.